Well, it seems the time has finally come. Later this month, numerous United States intelligence agencies, including the Secretary of Defense and the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, will be presenting Congress with a report on aliens. Let's go, baby. Or so we thought. As we all patiently wait for the US government to blow the whistle on aliens, it seems we're going to be waiting a while here. Although the report to Congress is going to be presented later this month, who knows what information becomes public. On top of that, it seems this idea that aliens are going to be confirmed, well I'm not so sure that's the case. People are incredibly hopeful, but at the end of the day, this report isn't focused so much on extraterrestrial beings as they are, say, unidentified flying objects, aka UFOs. Now a UFO could be anything, a piece of space rock, a glitch in the camera systems, or maybe, I don't know, just hear me out, crazy idea, but maybe it's aliens. Today on Life's Biggest Questions, we're asking what does the Pentagon know about UFOs? Smash that like button and let's get her going folks. I don't got all day here, we gotta talk about the aliens, let's get it. <laughs> I actually do have all day here because it's 9am. <laughs> so first things first, it seems the idea of UFOs is already going out the window. Instead of UFOs, which as previously mentioned stands for Unidentified Flying Object, the Pentagon now officially refers to these things as UAPs, which stands for Unexplained Aerial Phenomena. Why this change was so important, I really couldn't tell you. But after decades of the news, films, TV shows, video games, books, and even UFO enthusiasts referring to the spacecrafts aliens used as UFOs, for whatever reason, they decided now they want to start calling them UAPs. That in itself has got me questioning when the newer <laughs> unidentified aerial phenomenon. It's like another name for UFOs. And I'm like, why the f why they rebranding the name? <laughs> That in itself has got me questioning when the new world order will begin, but I guess that's for another video. Now this whole obsession with UFOs, or I guess now we'll be calling them UAPs, has been around for decades, as I mentioned before. However, there was a new peak of interest after previously classified videos of Navy encounters with UAPs dating back to 2004 and 2014 became available to the general public. The videos not only excite those who've spent their entire lives hunting aliens and trying to prove the naysayers wrong, but also caught the attention of Congress who questioned if any of the UAPs in these videos could be a potential threat. Now before we get all excited and assume that all members of Congress are fearing of an alien invasion, it seems that's not the case at all. Instead Congress thinks these UAPs are potentially the work of foreign enemies using new types of advanced technology that could be used for spying or who knows what. Enter Florida's GOP Senator Marco Rubio, who at the time was the chairman of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence and included specific wording back in 2020 as part of the Intelligence Authorization Act, which required government intelligence agencies to pretty much spill all they know about UAPs. And as we know, Trump was on board and agreed to put it through, which put pressure on the agencies to come up with a detailed report 180 days from January 1st when the deadline went into effect. Well, June 29th will mark the 180th day, and it is also when Congress is expected to be presented with some very interesting details. Or so we hope. Maybe not. In a statement to ABC News, Rubio said, I quote, Men and women we have entrusted with the defense of our country are reporting encounters with unidentified aircraft with superior capabilities. We cannot allow the stigma of UFOs to keep us from seriously investigating this. Side note, he's still calling them UFOs, so then why are we calling them UAPs? I'm just saying, something, there's, something with the government here is not up. Anyways, back to the quote. The forthcoming report is one step in that process, but it will not be the last. So clearly this is just the beginning and the US government is pressing hard. The Pentagon's top spokesperson, John Kirby, the one that does damage control when leaked alien footage goes viral, explained, I quote, we're providing context and information that we have on these phenomena and our focus is on, again, on supporting the DNI's efforts to produce this report. Now as I mentioned before, it's fun that we're getting all jacked up about aliens and flying saucers, but it seems there's a bit of disconnect between the alien enthusiasts and the US government. One side is excited thinking after all these years, they'll prove to everyone they were right all along and the general public were the crazy ones. The other side likely thinks this isn't aliens, but more so potential threats from other countries. Thus, they want their governments and their people to have a full understanding of what's happening. I'll let you guys figure out which side stands where. I mean, it may actually be hard to decipher which side I was talking about, as the US government has been doing things people have been calling crazy for years, but that's not the point here, guys. Point is, it seems we got two people with a common goal for different reasons. Naturally, the media has picked up on this and is turning the report into an alien tell-all. Unfortunately, it turns out that might not be the case at all. 
Speaking with ABC News, a Pentagon spokesperson explained, I quote, the protection of methodologies is an important part of how the UAP task force operates. This is an intelligence driven effort and in intelligence matters, you always try to protect the sources and methods used in order to prevent potential adversaries from getting an idea of how we learn things. This is a data driven examination of UAPs. The more data we have, the better we are able to identify what these UAPs are. So pretty much what they're saying is, for the task force to do what they do, they gotta keep how they obtain such information very low key. Which makes sense, especially given the vibes that I'm getting from the government that this isn't so much aliens that they're expecting, but more so that they expect these UAPs to be the work of, and I'm just gonna throw a wild idea out there guys, not necessarily gonna reference any of the six sources that said these two countries, say maybe it's China or Russia. <laughs> so, so then where does that leave us? Well more or less right back where we started, simply because the government isn't doing a great job of convincing people that these aren't the work of aliens, but they're also doing a very bad job denying it. All in all it seems even the government is taking a stance of, we don't think it's aliens, but I mean who knows for sure. According to the New York Times who spoke with numerous unnamed officials in relation to the report that will be released, over the last two decades there have been over 120 sightings or incidents related to what people believe to be flying saucers or unidentified aerial phenomena. Most of these sightings were not tied to or related to the US military or other advanced government technologies, which raises the question not so much of what, but who. Previously the New York Times published a report which included quotes from Navy pilots who saw the crafts with their own eyes. One explained how they saw these aircrafts move at speeds which would require so much energy they wouldn't be able to last more than an hour up in flight. These things were up there for 12 hours at a time. Still it seems although the government and media are now fully behind and willing to admit that UFOs or I guess UAPs as they're now referred to are real, they may not be the work of another species. We'll just have to wait and see what the official report says, but don't be surprised if it's mainly just claims of other countries potentially using tech we've yet to fully understand. Or maybe it's aliens. Aliens! I really hope it's aliens, guys, but I don't I don't think I don't think they're gonna it's, it won't be. As always, guys, we'd love to hear your thoughts on this one down below. For now, let's do some comment replies from the video. What if Logan Paul fought Tyson Fury? Jay said technique does not always win unless the difference in technique can make up for size. If the smaller guy has slightly better technique but the other guy is a lot bigger, the bigger guy will win every time. I was, I was, so I was referring to like Logan and Floyd. Um, I think if you compare someone like, if you, if, if, like I'm a UFC, I watch UFC so it's like if, if Francis Ngannou fought Conor McGregor, I think Ngannou would probably win. They're both good strikers, McGregor's a better striker probably but Ngannou's way bigger so yeah. I mean when there's such a, a drastic difference between size and technique, the technique will win every time because if you don't know what you're doing, as we saw, people are still saying that Logan won because he didn't get knocked out. He barely touched Floyd. He threw like, I don't know, 200 and something punches and like landed maybe 20. Like that's what I was talking about. He couldn't touch him. He couldn't hit him. So that's all I'm saying. Edgar Romero said, bro, do what if he fought Canelo? I'll be very honest with you guys. I'd rather <laughs> I, I like it would be this, the it's same answer. Canelo would destroy him. That's it. Like Fury is my heavyweight. He's much bigger. Canelo, uh, I mean, he's uh, again, he's not Logan size because Logan's like 6'2", 200 pounds. But I, I still think Canelo would kill him. I, like I, Canelo broke up his last opponent's orbital bone. A professional fighter who fought and challenged Canelo for the championship belt. Canelo broke his orbital bone. This is a guy that was trying to be champion. He spent his life as a boxer and he got his face broken by Canelo. I don't think Logan would do much better. Topcat2000 said he would get knocked out when Fury decides to finish him. I agree with that as well. I, I think I think it would be one punch. Like Tyson Fury is like, I think he's like 6'9", 270. Is that what I said in that video? 273? Like that's not somebody you want to get into a fight with. At, ever. Like even a screaming match, an argument, a disagreement I wouldn't even. Alright guys, that's all for this one. I've been your host, Pepper Jared Bronstein. We'll see you guys soon.